Indonesia, a nation of 17,000 verdant islands strung like jewels between the Pacific and Indian Oceans. Spanish-born biologist Cristina Diaz. She hasn't come to the island of Sulawesi for its lush forests, but for the diverse community that thrives in its undersea domain. For me, a biologist, to be here in Sulawesi, it's an event beyond my dreams. It's like having my own living laboratory to work and observe and experiment. Down here, you are in another world. I feel so comfortable and so part of something very large. It's a world of colors and sounds that it's very hard to describe. Where others might see a collage of colors and shapes in these waters, Diaz sees pattern and order. I am a taxonomist. And as a taxonomist, what we do is that we attempt to organize the incredible diversity of life that surrounds us. My favorite organism thrives under these waters. When I encounter a sponge, it just takes my breath away. I just want to stop and look. You know, they're just so alien, so old. I mean, so ancient and so different to anything else you find in the bottom of the sea. And you just cannot stop yourself asking questions to this animal. What are you? How did you grow to this size? How do you manage to, through every day? What do you do? You know, how do you eat? If the sponge is indeed an animal, it must eat to survive. How does it feed itself when it has no obvious mouth? Imagine that to get an ounce of food, a sponge has to pump over a ton of water through itself. Now, can you imagine doing that yourself? Drinking a ton of water to get an ounce of food to your body? Diaz has studied sponges for decades, yet she has never seen them feed in the wild. To make the invisible visible, Diaz injects a harmless colored dye into the water near the body of a sponge. One of the ways we can test for the rate of water flow that moves through the sponge body is to inject a colored dye and measure the speed at which it is pumped through the sponge. Actually, for me, this is the first time I've done this, and I've been really looking forward to the opportunity for years. And I'm so excited to try this experiment. When I start seeing the color dye coming out of the sponge in less than two seconds from when it was applied, I could not believe my eyes. This steady and strong continuous flow of water continuously coming out of the sponge was an incredible realization of the dynamic existence of this organism. is actually a fantastic pump, which requires an incredible coordination of cells to function. It's a living filtering machine. We need sponges to study in the lab, and so we have to collect specimens that we need to just cut a small section to be examined, and because it doesn't have a nervous system, we are not really hurting it. 
In time, the cut area will grow again as if nothing had happened to it. All animals rely on cell-to-cell -cell communication. But Diaz and others have been able to show that sponge cells have a unique way of working together. Cell-to-cell -cell communication is very important for all organisms. But in sponges, it's uniquely important because in sponges, cells carry out all the functions that other organisms are taken care of by specific organs, like the heart, or the nervous system, or the skeletal system, or the blood. So sponge cells have many responsibilities to perform. I think they're beautiful, they're original, they are mysterious. They have lots of secrets that we have to unveil, you see? And that for me is an attractive thing. They keep a lot of secrets that I think are very important.